Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour, how we stamp, and how we seal this concrete patio on the front of this house. Now this patio is about 6 feet wide and about 40 feet long. This is a pretty typical front patio, you know, for a home that gets poured in Maine. And a lot of times we'll broom finish these, but this customer wanted a stamp finish, so... You know, stay tuned for the whole video. You'll see what we're going to use for a stamp on this. And then you'll see how we're going to clean it and seal it. And what the final outcome is, how it looks when we get all done. So we formed this thing up. We used a 2x12 on the outside of that frost wall. And then we put a mat of rebar in it, as you can see, about 2 feet on center. And we're pouring the concrete about 6 inches thick for this patio. This is just what the owner wanted. So we're just doing what they wanted and it's perfectly fine. We put color in the concrete also. We got a like a charcoal color. So they wanted a really dark gray color in the concrete. If you don't put any color in the concrete, then it kind of turns a really light, light gray. Like you can see the foundation wall right there under that OSB plywood. That's kind of the color what concrete turns to after it dries out with no color in it. So they wanted to keep this quite a bit darker, so we put some integral color in it. And I'll have a link down below if you want to get some integral color about where to get it and how to save some money on that. So we got it all poured straight edge, just like any normal patio we'd pour in uh, bow float. And now we're starting the stamping process. And when, when we start our stamping process, you know, we got to time this thing to get on it just right. And this is probably about, see, you can see it's all in the shade. There's, it's not in the sun, so it's all drying pretty evenly. So th this was probably about 45 minutes to an hour after we got done pouring it that we're getting on the concrete here. It's too soft to walk on. You know, you'd sink in probably 3 eighths to a half inch if you walked on it. But with those concrete skids that I'm using, those concrete sliders or whatever you guys call them, we call them skids. You can get on it just a little early so you get it all magged out. And we mag it out. We always try to mag out the surface if we can, if we have time, before we stamp to fill in any little holes, any little imperfections, you know, take out any bull float lines and, and just bring up some more cream and some more paste to the surface. It just gives you a nice cleaner look to the stamp. And you can see Darren's going back and he's putting on the powdered release agent. And that release agent does a couple things. It helps keep the stamps from sticking to the concrete. So you can just press them in and pull them right off. And then it also adds a secondary color to the surface of the concrete. When you get all done washing and sealing, you'll have this little antiquing effect or secondary color to the finish. And that's what this powder does also. So you could put on, you know, any colored release agent you want. We're using a little bit lighter gray for this one. And uh, it is, this is a pretty standard release agent color that we use for most of our stamps. So we're getting ready to stamp. And again, it's you got to get on this thing. If, if you're new to this, you got to get on it early enough so you have time to go from one end to the other. It might take 30 minutes to go from one end to the other. So you can't wait for the perfect time. Sometimes you got to start when you feel like it's just a little bit early to make sure when you get down the other end it's not too hard. But all this all being in the shade like this, this isn't going to be too bad. It's not going to dry too fast on us. We're using a random stone pattern for this one. This is this is one of the more popular patterns that we do. And you can see we're just working our way one stamp at a time. They all interconnect together. With these stamps, you got to keep them all going the same direction. So there's some writing on the top of the stamps you'll see here in a minute when we get a little bit closer. And you just got to make sure they connect together the best if you keep that all going the same way. If you turn and rotate the stamps a little bit, they don't connect together as good. And the pattern changes. We also use a roller right there. If you can see, we're rolling the edges with the textured roller because 
the stamp that we use to go up next to the foundation is a really flexible one but it's still it, right there you can see it flexes a little bit but it still doesn't get right up next to the very edge so having that textured roller make sure you have texture right up next to the foundation wall you can see for two guys you know something this size this is about six feet by 40 feet this isn't too bad we're just working steady working our way right from that one end to the other where we started pouring to where we finished pouring that release powder that's pretty messy too you can see I got a mask on I don't like breathing that stuff Darren didn't wear a mask today but he usually wears a mask too I don't know for whatever reason I guess we were just in a little bit of a hurry when we got started and he didn't get his mask so you can see how he's rolling that edge with that texture roller it just so when you when you put those stamps down and they run over the top of the form like that the form kind of holds up the stamp a little bit when you go to press it down so it doesn't sink into the concrete as well right next to the form so that's why we roll that edge next to the form too you can see that flex mat I got going right up the wall like that that's probably half the thickness of those other stamps those other stamps are really rigid We're just using our body weight too because we're all in the shade. If this was in the sun, we'd probably have our tamper out here and we'd be tamping this thing instead of just kind of stomping it with our feet. But where it's all in the shade, it, we're getting really good texture in the concrete just by using our feet. You can just start to see the writing on those stamps on the top of them and how we're keeping that writing going all the same direction kind of like north to south if you're looking at it from this angle you see how the the writing on the stamps we're keeping all kind of to the north of the stamp you just keep working one stamp at a time putting them together just like a puzzle almost and you can kind of start to see the rock, the random stone pattern now behind us. Again, we're using a lot of release powder to keep these stamps from sticking. So the release powder does cover up some of the pattern, some of the texture at this point. That's why when you pull those stamps up and you go to move it, you always got to check under the stamp to make sure you got good texture under it. You, you can tell if it doesn't have good texture then you'll just see dry release powder under it and you just put the stamp back down and tamp it some more until you see the the texture of the stamp in the actual release powder there's that texture roller I'll have that a link for that down in the description too for you guys that don't use one of those um, those things save you a ton of work they're definitely worth it and then those other two little tools there you see on the stamps those are we're cutting in the groove lines where I where I put that flex mat up against the wall like that. The grooves don't go all the way to the wall because the wall is holding up the stamp. So the two or three inches in the random stone rock grooves, I use those little tools to finish the grooves. Now what I'm doing is I'm measuring out for my saw cut. So this is the next day. We come back and we're going to saw our expansion joints in here and those saw joints are to help control any random cracks and because this is six feet wide i'm going about every six to eight feet with these saw cuts the saw cut will go down about an inch and a quarter inch and a half that's my soft cut saw i'm using you could use any saw with a diamond blade if you do it the next day that saw is specifically made for cutting the same day and we got two or three of those so now I'm just brooming off the residual dust from the release agent and the dust from the saw cut and now we're going to wash it so we use Dawn dish detergent to wash the concrete and what why we use Dawn is Dawn really cuts that release powder we want to remove as much of that release powder as we can just by lightly scrubbing it 
kind of like washing it like a car. Then the concrete sealer will make will make sure that sealer adheres to the concrete and it bonds to it really well. If we don't, if we leave too much release powder on there, then the, the sealer is just going to flake off and peel off and it's not going to look very good. So I got all that release powder broomed off. Now I'm rinsing it off the best I can. I'm trying to get most as much of it off as I can just by rinsing it with a pressure washer. And then you can see my bucket of Dawn right there. Now I'm dumping that on and I'll just scrub it with that with that brush, that soft bristled brush. You know, and I'm just going over it just like I would a car. I'm pressing down a little bit. I'm getting in all the grooves. S some of the release powder is going to stay in those those deeper grooves. You can kind of see it already how it's darker in some of those grooves. And that's okay. We press that into the surface. The sealer is going to bond to that. It's just the the stuff that doesn't get bonded or doesn't get pressed into the surface, you got to make sure you remove all of it. So, and that's why we use the Dawn. The Dawn works, works really good. If you guys still watching, you know, and, and this is your first video, and my name's Mike Day. We specialize in concrete flat work, floors, slabs, decorative concrete, uh, concrete repair, all kinds of concrete stuff. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, make sure you go down there and hit the subscribe button. If you if you like the video, you know, please down, go down there and hit the like button. All right, so this is the day after we wash it. We come back and we put the sealer on it. And my go-to sealer is the Foundation Armors AR350. And we're going to put a couple coats on this thing. So the concrete's all dried out. Now we're spraying on a really nice light coat for the first coat. And that stuff dries pretty fast. In about 20, 30 minutes, that'll dry. You can see how the sealer brings out the color in the in the concrete. We're putting on the second coat now. Just nice and even, spraying it on at about you know three to four hundred square feet a gallon each coat. We don't want to get it on too thick. And that's how we do it, guys. That's how we do our stamp concrete. This is what the final look is. Well, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.